In the summer of 2018, we completed the famous Iceland Ring Road trip in under a week. We rented a small vehicle from Blue Car Rental that was more than enough for our trip. In this video, we share our experience with Blue Car Rental and why we chose this company for our trip. We also talk about what to expect while driving on Iceland Ring Road. Here's a short background of our trip to Iceland. We actually had no plans to travel to Iceland. But when we were traveling by Iceland Air, the airline offered us a 7-day stopover for free. We made a separate video where we share our itinerary and clips from places we visited and stayed at. There's also a blog post linked in the description. There you can download a complete map of our Iceland Ring Road trip. The blog post also details our total cost, accommodations and other useful information. Besides thinking about places we wanted to see in Iceland, the first order of business was to reserve a car. So I began my search for Iceland car rental companies on Expedia, Priceline, Kayak and other websites. The first thing that I noticed was how expensive the car rental rates were. And those car rates didn't include certain valuable insurances specific to Iceland. But then I started googling Iceland car rentals on a budget. One of the first companies that popped on my radar was Blue Car Rental. The company has been operating since 2010 and it is the largest local car rental company in Iceland. One thing that immediately stood out was Blue Car Rental's competitive rates. The total cost of renting from Blue Car Rental was at least 10 to 20% cheaper compared to its large competitors. Their rates also included a super collision damage waiver, theft protection and gravel protection. Out of all these, the most valuable insurance is the gravel protection. I will explain why shortly. Blue Car Rental offers the newest fleet of a wide range of vehicles. Their office is conveniently located in Keflavik International Airport. They also have a car rental office in Reykjavik. We chose the Toyota Aigo with automatic transmission and unlimited mileage. What we actually got was a Hyundai i10, which was a cute compact car, perfect for the two of us. Here's a breakdown for our car rental cost with Blue Car Rental. We also added an extra driver and the optional sand and ash protection insurance. The total cost of our 6-day reservation was $590 with fees and taxes included, which came out at $98 per day. We would have paid at least 20% more by going with another major car rental company, such as Avis, Budget or Alamo. Moreover, rates from Avis, Budget and others do not include some of the insurances I mentioned. Blue Car Rental includes them by default. We provided a link for Blue Car Rental if you'd like to check them out and compare rates. Another common question is whether Blue Car Rental provides coupon codes or discounts. As for the discounts, the answer is yes. If you book a multi-day trip, Blue Car Rental can provide anywhere from 5 to over a 15% discount. The company applies this multi-day discount automatically during your checkout. As for coupon codes, I scouted the internet when we were booking our trip and found none. I also checked shortly while ago and it seems that the codes that I found didn't work either. But because the rates are as low as they are, not having a coupon code should not be a problem. As for our check-in experience with Blue Car Rental, it was very smooth. It took us a few minutes to get from the Keflavik airport to Blue Car Rental office by the shuttle. The check-in process was fast. We verified our car and noted any scratches or damages in our car rental agreement. And we were out of the office in less than 15 minutes driving on the road. When we were booking our car rental several months ahead of our trip, we paid for our reservation in advance. But you don't have to. You can pay for your car rental when you'll be picking up your vehicle. Blue Car Rental offers free cancellations. Also, there are no hidden costs either. So I wasn't too worried if we had to cancel our reservation for some reason. Driving in Iceland was very easy. Many road signs use Latin letters and you can understand what they mean. There was not a single time we got confused or didn't know what to do while driving. You can look up typical road signs in Europe before your trip if you'd like. We included a link to such source for you to check out. In Iceland, cars drive on the right side. To drive a passenger vehicle, you must have a driver license that was issued at least one year ago. You also must be at least 20 years of age. 
But if you are planning to rent and drive a 4x4 all-wheel drive vehicle, you must be at least 23 years of age. If you have a US driver license or a driver license written in Latin letters, you do not even need an international driving permit. There are several road hazards that you need to be aware of. Iceland is notorious for its rapidly changing weather. Also, certain road hazards are prevalent in certain times of the year. The first hazard is sand and ash storms. Because of active volcanic activity, sand and ash can be present in the air. If the air is dry with strong wind, sandstorms can develop. Sand and ash storms frequently happen in winters from February through April. They also happen in the southern Iceland around Vik and Skaftafel. If you get caught in a sandstorm, the damage to your vehicle can be severe. This can include dents, broken windows and lights and damaged paint. When we were there in June, we bought sand and ash protection insurance. Luckily, there was no sandstorms. Summers in Iceland tend to be wet with lots of precipitation. This prevents sand and ash storms from forming. It is up to you to buy or not sand and ash insurance. If you travel in the summer, the likelihood of a sandstorm is minimal. I included a link below to the Icelandic Meteorological Office. The office provides real-time alerts on various weather hazards. Another notorious road hazard on Iceland Green Road is gravel. Green Road is paid for the most part, but there were a few gravel patches here and there. Also, if you plan to visit certain places outside of Iceland Green Road, driving on gravel is inevitable. For instance, if you plan on seeing Daddy Force waterfall, there will be a gravel road. While driving on gravel is not a problem, it becomes a hazard if you have a vehicle in front of you. There was one time a few flying gravel rocks hit our car from a passing vehicle in front of us. There were noticeable scratches on the vehicle, but because we had a gravel protection from Blue Car Rental, the car rental company didn't ask any questions. If you're going to drive in summer like we did, expect a lot of rain and even snow. There was rain for several days when we visited Jokosarlon Glacier Lagoon in southeastern Iceland. One time when we climbed the mountain in our car, snow started falling out of nowhere. Iceland's Rin Road is a relatively quiet road with very little traffic. You'll be driving through some remote areas, sometimes with no cell phone coverage. There'll be only nature around you. Besides that gravel accident, rain and snow, we didn't encounter any other weather hazards. But again, we were there in mid-June and summers have less hazardous weather. Another real road hazard that you will come across almost for sure is Icelandic ship. There are over 800,000 ship roaming the pastures in summers in Iceland. Compare this to 327,000 Icelanders. For this reason, when you drive on a Rin road in countryside, ship will be everywhere. Settlers from Norway brought the Icelandic ship around the 10th century AD. This ship belonged to the Northern European short-tailed ship breed. This breed is less common in Europe these days. Many farmers let their ship roam hills and traverse mountains throughout the summer. By September, farmers round up their ship and keep them inside for the winter. While ship roam and graze peacefully, sometimes stray ship can run off to the road out of nowhere. When you drive, be aware of this hazard and give ship the right of way. And the final thing that I will mention here is the gas prices. Gasoline is notoriously expensive in Iceland. This is due to high transportation cost and no domestic oil production in the country. Gas prices can be at least two times more expensive than they are in the United States. While not the largest expense, we paid $300 for gas on our trip. That is it for our review of a blue car rental and our tips on driving the famous Iceland Green Road. I hope you will enjoy your upcoming trip to Iceland and its beautiful nature. If you like this video and got something out of it, please give it a like. Subscribe to our channel as we often post travel guides and other useful information for world travelers. Thank you for watching.